tension here means conflict. This conflict is very important. It has very social and economic consequences for us. We already know these terms standard and vernacular. The choice of any of these varieties relate us with a particular social class. Vernacular speakers are linked with middle class, lower middle class, working class. Standard variety speakers are linked with elite class, upper class. And when we are associated with a particular social class, so we also have access to all those benefits which are available to that social class. So this is how the choice of variety, standard or vernacular has different results for the speakers. Vernaculars are symbolic capital in local market. I see we are talking about language market in a metaphorical sense. There is no such actual market where languages are sold or bought. Actually, we can compare it with a market because here too we have competition. Here too value is determined and here too benefits are exchanged and some uh, even uh, losses may occur uh, if we do not make appropriate choice of variety. So we are deprived of certain benefits. So because all these things can be understood better if we use the language of economics. So that's why these terms are used and you know these terms were used by Bordy. So uh, these are his ideas that we are still talking about. When we say vernaculars are symbolic capital in local communities, so capital, you know, this is again an economic term. It stands for material capital, the money, hard or soft money. So there is another kind of capital that is not material, that is cultural, that is symbolic. Language, what is language? Language is a symbolic system, so it is a symbolic capital. So that's why we say that vernaculars are non-standard languages, are called vernaculars. They are capital in local market and give access to locally controlled resources. Locally controlled resources are like housing, local jobs, and other services which are related with local community. They are very close to our everyday life. Standard variety ties the speakers to institutions because they are linked with upper elite class people. Elite class people are related with institutions. So their variety has value in institutions and local variety it is related with our locality our specific places so it is linked with places so this is the divide vernaculars are related with specific places and standard varieties are linked with institutions those who are attached with institutions Naturally, they are powerful and so is their language and their language is also powerful. It is not individuals, it means rather the words of the institutions which are powerful. When they are linked with standard variety, standard variety is linked with institutions and institutions are powerful, so variety becomes powerful. It doesn't mean words are powerful or powerless. It is the power of institutions that stands behind the words, behind the variety. Same is the case with local power. Local variety also has power and its power 
it works within the specific locality. It means speakers are linked with varieties, varieties are linked with classes, classes are linked with community. Speakers words are powerful if the variety is powerful and variety is powerful if the social class is powerful. These are power relations. On one side, we have relationship of language and class and parallel to that power relations are also involved. Gender ideology. Now, this is the factor we are interested in throughout our course. We are studying other factors just to see how this factor works in combination with these social factors. Gender ideology, the conventional thinking about gender, the conventional ideas about gender, we call that gender ideology, relates certain qualities with men and certain qualities with women. And this brings in what is called gender order. You are familiar with this term because we have been using it since the beginning of the course. So, I won't explain it here. Similarly, language ideology as we have gender ideology, ideas about gender. Similarly, we have ideas about language, we call them language ideology. Language ideology likewise relates certain qualities and stereotypes with certain varieties. This is called icon, iconization, the term icon and uh, we get iconization, we iconize our language variety. This is an attempt to show a natural relationship between varieties and their speakers. We also call it naturalization. When we establish a connection and we promote it through our use and talk, this process goes on and as a result of this, something is established, becomes part of our social order, our gender order, our language order. We call this process naturalization. If this natural relationship is taken as truth, it becomes language ideology. For example, abonics. This is combination of ebony and phonics. Ebony, you know, this is name of black wood and phonics pronunciation. So, this is used for the variety of English that is spoken by African American people in USA. Uh, this variety is called abonics or uh, more uh, commonly it is called American uh, African American vernacular English. It is considered inferior to general American because of this language ideology that this is superior, this is inferior and the people who would use this variety they would also be superior and those who would opt for this they would be inferior. Teachers in schools think that those children who speak black English, Ebonics uh, and the third name we have uh, talked about here. So, they are verbally deprived, they have some verbal deficiency. So, this language, this variety is associated with verbal deficiency, rather they say they do not have any language. It is believed by the school teachers that black children do not think logically, they cannot affirm, they cannot negate, they cannot categorize things, all these are logical processes. So, they say that if they use black English because black English is not language, so it will not enable its speakers to think logically. So, we conclude that language ideology or stereotyping the things that by convention we believe makes a variety powerful or better than 
other varieties in linguistic market. Otherwise, there is nothing natural that makes some variety superior or inferior. It is the people, their stereotyping, their ideology, their belief that make uh, this difference.